Друзья, здравствуйте! Как, собственно, и планировалось, вчера я делала объявление о том, что сегодня мы с Александром проведем в прямом эфире наше обычное стандартное занятие, которое мы проводим по утрам для Александра. Для меня это уже день. У Александра сейчас 7.37, что ли, утра. И каждое утро мы занимаемся тем, что тренируем английский. Вот уже на протяжении более чем двух лет, мне кажется, надо потом отдельно посчитать, сколько это уроков и написать. И наша задача будет показать вам, как мы это делаем, чтобы вы в режиме реального времени посмотрели и поняли вообще, что происходит. Сейчас я приглашу в эфир Александра. И мы начнем. Вы присоединяйтесь. Если у вас будут какие-то вопросы, мы, наверное, попробуем ответить на них, либо же я отдельно после эфира попробую ответить на них, потому что все-таки это будет урок в режиме реального времени, и как-то прерываться на него мы, наверное, вопросы прерываться не будем. Окей. Hello, hello, my teacher. Good morning. Do you see me and hear me? Yes, I do see you, of course. Okay, I see you and hear you too. So, we checked the connection. Everything seems to be working. It's We're amazing. We're gonna speak English only, right? <laughs> okay, as it usual. It has to be as I a natural so. uh, English lesson. So, today is a Tuesday. What are your plans for today? Oh. It's very unpredictable. Usually you don't ask me about yes, my plans just for, directly work, for, the, you know. for the day, but okay, I want to tell you today here a very tough day. I need, to, I need to record three small courses for one my consulting training program. And at night, about 11 p.m., I'm going to fly to Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So I have very limited time to to do or a lot of things. Already. How long are you going to be in Taiwan? Um, I will be there like for four days and something. Not not for a long time. I'm going to be back like uh, five days. Uh -huh. And what are you going to do over there? I have uh, two workshops are uh, how to use statistics. Uh, let's say how to measure productivity of your people, uh, company units, and how to get everything together, how to implement this uh, measurement system. A separate workshop, or it's going to be within this big one-year program that... Yes, of course, it's within this big program. Uh, it, they have uh, my clients, my Taiwanese clients, they have a session, four-day session, and on this uh, four-day session, I have to deliver three workshops. Okay, and how do they study going on? How do they study? How is their progress? And you know, they they really they run amazing because um, in this group, um, the main consultant on this group is our most skillful consultant in the world because it's a new branch and new language, and so we care about them. We try to, you know, try to make Does it perfect. Does she speak world. Chinese? No, of course, she doesn't speak Chinese as the same as me. I, I don't speak Chinese at all. So this is, we use like two ways translation, English, Chinese, Chinese, English, forth and back every time. It takes time, really. But I, I want to tell you about this group. It goes amazing because they, um, now they, they made about 40% of the program and they don't have any discrepancies. So every task, Uh, for every company, and we have uh, 10 companies, 17 are business corners on, in, on this group because there are many companies with corners, and they, they do everything absolutely perfect. It's like, at least for, for a while, it looks like it's absolutely perfect module how to deliver our consulting program. Well, maybe, maybe their culture uh, plays some role in this process also it's hard to say but uh, hard to tell but uh, it's really maybe i i don't want to tell anything about this culture but i, I want to i want them to go at least for uh, 60 70 percent of the program and after i will be able to share some ideas about culture business culture and everything 
why did you impute there a third language? Because it looks like it would be easier to have Russian translated to Chinese. Why is there such a long um, way? Russian, then you, need, you studied English, now you give it in English, they translate it into Chinese. Why not direct? It, it seems easier, it seems faster. Russian to Chinese. Um, uh, okay. The first, the first reason that we have everything translated in English and we deliver in New York. And um, it's first uh, because uh, all the, like say, newest versions of our materials, newest versions of our consulting program is in English only. Uh -huh. yeah, the true phrase now, uh, I, I, I told you, um, now I record in some videos and so this is how I adjust uh, this English version program to Russian. So now I'm in the middle, mm -hmm. I'm translating our newest version to Russian. Mm -hmm. It's first reason, but not the most important one, but the first one. Second, Taiwanese people, Taiwan is not China. It's not like a mainland China. Taiwan is a much more Western oriented country because they were on the United States for 40, 50 years and uh, they have very western culture and this is why um let's say a big percentage of these people i uh, they cannot speak freely they cannot speak easier or uh, in english but they understand some things and you know it's like partially they partially okay. understand a second reason and if you, we add um, one more language like you know we, i have an absolutely opposite point of view you see you tell me, okay, why do you add this English? Uh, like, uh, uh, but for me, it sounds why like. Why do you add Russian? Was, yes, what's the reason to add Russian as a third language? Because they partially understand uh, English. And of course, they, they know Chinese. And this is why it's really easier for me. Uh, because sometimes some things they can ask in English. Uh, some things they can explain uh, in English. And the third reason. Uh, because it's Western-oriented culture with Chinese, traditional Chinese language. Um, let's say uh, a lot of designations, a lot of business words, they use uh, English business words. So the, for them, it's much easier. And for me also. So, and this is, there are three reasons why. <laughs> okay, so uh, what do you think of this idea? Uh, it's uh, I have I don't have a business in America. My business is connected with China, Taiwan, Europe. So I don't need to study English. I need just someone who will translate me into their language. Like I, I have a business in Prague. So why do I need English? I better have a direct translation from Russian to Czech. I, I cannot imagine really direct translation because it's not that easy to find someone who is able to translate business um, business things uh, directly from Russian to Chinese and back. Because we are not talking about uh, shopping or some tourist experience. We're talking about business and business vocabulary. So it's, it looks like a challenge really to find someone and something. Because all their, you know, these business books, all the business materials, they're all in English. And if we translate it from Russian to, you know, uh, translation from English to Russian, it's a challenge itself. It's a huge challenge because a lot of sense were lost uh, because of these translations. Yeah, I, re I really love to show these examples. Like, for example, in English, we have this word control. I have to control my employees. You know, in Russian, very often you'll see in Russian books, you will see the translation. Мне нужно контролировать моих моих сотрудников. That's how they translate but, it. But it's insane, really, because it's, it's, it doesn't mean uh, контролировать сотрудников. It means управлять сотрудниками. In English, it means uh, I have to control my employees. It means мне uh, нужно управлять моими сотрудниками. And, you know, this Russian, let's say Russian business books, which are were translated from um, English to Russian, they're full of these very English. stupid mistakes. It's it's kind of, I don't know what, English or... England. 
I don't know, it's Runglish. Runglish is better. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But the problem is, it's not only about the vocabulary. It's about sense. So it's impossible to understand the main idea. And this is why Russian people, sometimes they read English books, translated to Russian, and they, they say something like, it sounds stupid, really. It really sounds stupid. It sounds, some, it sounds weird. It's, it's hard to grasp these ideas because... Uh, but the, the main reason is translation. I can provide you a lot of examples. Uh, wrong translation or business book, especially management book. And it, it's, it, when it comes to my expertise area, but I believe if you take any other area of expertise, you will find the same problems with translations. And look at this. Uh, we take our, some topic, some subject, which is translated from English to Russian <laughs> in some little bit weird way, really. Mm -hmm. And second, you have translated to Chinese from Russian. You know, it's a big chance you, you lose some, you will lose some sense, really, as the result. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's one more reason. And one more reason, it's also a very interesting reason, that Russian language, is, it's, it's very hard to translate it to any language because Russian language uh, doesn't have um, so particular strong structure logical structure and this is why to understand russian you have to understand context and if you translate for example phrase by phrase as usually we do on our workshops it's all you you you, you need to you need to have a translator who really knows this topic the, almost on the same level by saying these words <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you about it more, but I, I don't want to waste I your have time. I a but... great example. We will discuss it now. Yeah. So you, you understand, know. it's it's a challenge to translate from Russian to 100%. another language just phrase by phrase. It's almost impossible. And if someone's, someone does it, I want to just say, oh my God, you are a genius, because this structure of Russian language it doesn't help you. You know, we have to cover now very deep things. Unfortunately, we have to cover them. Although we speak about this almost every hour lesson, you know, we speak about uh, memory, we speak about duplication, we speak about what is really language studying. Is it a memorizing or is it a duplication? Is it understanding? Unfortunately, it seems like we will have to cover it now too. So sorry for this, that we do it again, but uh, today in the morning, I had a lesson and there was a phrase. Just a second. I want to give you the very exact phrase. Because we <laughs> stopped at this phrase and we tried, oh, great, I found it. Uh, we discussed Instagram topic with a student. Include a traffic driving call to action to your posts. Okay, include traffic driving call to action to your post. Okay. Great. Yes. I know that we now, after two years, do not have any trouble with duplication. <laughs> but what's funny about the student, he's at the same level that you had two years ago. So what he did huh. first, he was unable to duplicate it. Okay. He said, Turan, do all your students have troubles with memory? Or memory. I am the only one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you remember my mom? She's seventeen and she has your lessons and she after every lesson she she says to me like, Oh my god, I don't remember anything. I really don't remember anything. Exactly. I don't remember anything. And uh how this phrase sounds in Russian. Look at this. Включите ваши посты. Призывы к действию. Ну, если упростить, включите Которые ваши... при, приводят вам, там, приводят вам трафик, направляют трафик. На... Как okay. это звучит по-английски? Включите э, призывающие, э, приводящие к трафику э, вызовы к действию в ваши посты. Listen to it. Include traffic driving call to action to your posts. Yep, sounds very natural in English. In Russian, it sounds, включите вы ваши посты что-то. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely not the end, structure. Right? Yeah, absolutely. It's just upside down. So what was he trying to do? He was translating every word. Oh. 
here it's it's tough really so what is the difference between duplication how you understand it right what is the difference between duplication and translation and memorizing how you see it difference translation duplication and memorizing yeah. so duplication is like a first step if you cannot duplicate uh, you really cannot grasp it. You cannot understand this idea. It's obvious, really. And, you know, uh, I want to tell you one thing. Uh -huh. Here in the United States, I met a lot of people, Russian people, who are here like for 25 years or maybe more. And um, not all of them, but a big part of them, they really cannot duplicate. And... And this is why the English is really weird, a little bit weird. And uh, they understand only short phrases, uh, short sentences, very short, very simple, and so, let, let's say, not very English constructions. Yeah. And, uh, and, and, and one more thing, you know, it's, it's a really bad thing about them because um, somehow, naturally, for in, in all these years, they acquired this habit to show that they are able to understand, but the truth is they, they cannot. And it's, it's really, it's insane. It's, you, and and for, for a consultant like me, it's, it's a hell, really. But it's you first, so you can... This student has the same problem of not understanding. Yes, but there is a difference. He doesn't live in the United States for 25 years, and he doesn't have this idea like he is very familiar with English. But the he mechanism that was raised with us at schools, at university, is the same. You don't say when you don't understand. You see the mechanism. Yeah, yeah, yes, absolutely. I, I, and, and I see it. My mom, she dramatizes it, insanely dramatizes it. And, and for me, it takes enormous amount of efforts to make her believe that it's not that important to understand that first you need to duplicate it exactly you and uh yes it's true because we are trained to understand and and you know it it's like some machine in our mind which says us like you cannot duplicate if you don't understand or if you duplicate something and or you don't understand, don't understand you just memorize yes yes so it's another problem so the first the first thing, you need to break this machine. You need to be able to duplicate without any understanding. It's a very important thing, really. But how to break it? Um, for me, for example, uh, just don't take it too serious, really. <laughs> <laughs> just play a game. Why not? Okay. You know, you sent me this stupid video with French. It's, it's so funny, really. I, I love so because of this video about duplication I, I i watched only the first part sorry i, I didn't I, I am going to finish. finish it but yes but i want to tell you yes it's true it's just you need to duplicate like a kid yeah you don't need to think like a child yeah absolutely. they mumble jumble mumble and they don't uh, care about this you know sense and so you need to have the spirit just try to try to embrace this you know, game spirit. Uh, try not to be too serious when you duplicate and you do the duplication drill. Try to off your mind and your analytical abilities and your desire to understand everything. So just try to play because we have this ability. Do you remember, for example, when we were kids? Maybe you weren't kids. Um, I was at least. And we had our, we loved uh, rock and roll. We loved uh, heavy metal, AC, DC, and we we seen the songs, and we didn't understand. And but it it didn't it didn't give us any problems with their singing. Yeah. Okay. I I didn't understand, but I seen the songs. The same thing here. Just duplicate. Yeah. Don't care. It's the first step. And second thing, yes, you're right. Absolutely, people try to memorize. And it's like a machine in our mind. And we need to duplicate, but we try to memorize. And we think, okay, we need to memorize it to duplicate. But it's not true. We don't need to memorize it to duplicate. We just need to duplicate. We just need to skip this, <laughs> this part just to duplicate. And if you duplicate in some moment, of course, if you clear this words, this construction, you are... Um, 
you start to understand it. Okay. Um, I want to explain how we did it with you because now we use quite, uh, you know, quite sophisticated materials. Because uh, now we're gonna do some revision of the vocabulary, like you know, dwarf and stuff like this. It's uh, not very easy vocabulary. And the sentence. You know, I want to tell you about dwarf. Everyone knows. Everyone watches uh, Game of Thrones, <laughs> and they have dwarves this word there. This became too popular. Yeah, so this word, and if you read Tolkien or some fairy tales, there are dwarves everywhere, so it's very usual But word. do you know the but, meaning of a dwarf as a verb? You know, but you know, sure no, everybody no, else no, 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 yeah, absolutely, not as a verb, usually, as, as a noun. Yes, Sorry. so this is a point, and uh, what we did with you, and uh, this is that I want to stress out, we made the gradients of materials. Because the gradients means everything. We cannot, we couldn't work with dwarf or we couldn't work with sentences containing really hard vocabulary from the very beginning. You just, you were not able to, you know, it, it was like the example with the student. He is not able to duplicate a sentence if there is a word he doesn't understand. And what he does, he tries to repeat without understanding. And he thinks, I will not catch it. But it's impossible not to catch it. You see immediately if person doesn't understand something. You know how? I don't know, maybe some silly face. Uh, he uh, cannot make a question to it. Oh, yes, of course. If you make him to, to make some questions, of course, he is not able to. So that's what we do with every sentence. You make a question to it. And when person needs to make a question to it, he, it means he needs to turn on his mind and do something with his friends. And if he doesn't understand it, you see, it won't be possible. It is just how, how to make a question. It's impossible. And he was not able to make a question. And that's how we found out this problem. And mm -hmm. making question helped to a student to turn off this translation mechanism. Yes, of course, it takes time. I remember how it was from the very beginning. And uh, it, it turns off step by step, piece by piece, gradually uh, in time. Yes. Yes, and it works. And, you know, it turns off a very natural way because uh, if you have these automatical uh, machines to ask to, you know, to, to say something, um, the stronger your machines, the, the less you, you have to use your, let's say, analytical abilities. So, and you gradually turn this thing off. Absolutely. And look at this sentence. Include a traffic driving call to action to your posts. There is a problem with two. Because duplication, One. you cannot duplicate without understanding at this point when you create machines. And um, two in all our books is written to means k like come to me yes so it's like a direction you approach something Absolutely. yeah but you remember we translated the sentence yeah yes of course it doesn't mean k vashem pastam Yes, yes, absolutely. And it may No, it's like add to something, add to, you absolutely, know, to but breakfast. It's another meaning and it makes you suffer because it does not suit to your knowledge of this meaning and it makes yes. you suffer. And, 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 and you know, it's, what was the solution? As I understand, you just need to clarify every definition of the word. And it, and also, it also, you, 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 and it's interesting because even you, you tell me like it's the same word, but the truth is it's not the same word. It's absolutely another word, but we just have the same symbol, the same sound and the same letters, but it's another word because absolutely. Uh, to approach something and to be part of something is two different meaning. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So um, when you clarify things, it becomes um, clearer. And when you just learn that two has another meaning, and it has also one other meaning, and it has other meaning depending on a depending on a context. Again, wonderful Russian context. It also appears in English too. It becomes less to duplicate. It becomes um, um, less difficult to duplicate it. Yes, absolutely. And you know, I noticed one thing. 
I realize I watch on people around me, and some of them they learn English, they study. It's very hard, and I want to tell you one problem which stops their progress is they are too a little bit too lazy. <laughs> my 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 daughter she loves to say it this way like a little bit too. She's they're a little bit too lazy okay. because. Uh, the the true phrase, uh, you know, there is a very interesting thing about English. Um, if you if you study uh, every day, you have a lot of things you don't understand that you don't understand. It's impossible to understand everything because you open some article and you have a lot of new words, or you watch or I don't know watch some Game of Thrones thing, and you have a lot of very unusual unknown for your words, and you have to stop it at the most interesting, you know, moment, you have to stop it and to You're find this the word. You're finals and you have to stop it. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and this is, and the same thing when it comes to communication with people, our emails and everything. And, but people, they're lazy. They don't stop. They don't uh, look or uh, in a dictionary to find definitions of this word to sort it out and they just you know they just miss it and they go further and it's not a good thing really because uh, this approach uh, you know it's it's a lazy approach and this approach stops the progress unfortunately so besides of all our drills also i, ha I have this habit um i cannot say like uh I, I do it every time, 100%. Uh, sometimes I, I miss it too, but in, yes, in general, it's yes. also the duty of a teacher. Yes. We can't go it's on a duty. if you didn't understand. Yes. Yeah, you're absolutely right. If you have a teacher, but we don't have a teacher in the real life. We have a teacher only on a lesson. That's but so when it comes to... To make Game of Thrones easier for us. <laughs> yes, absolutely. What do you think uh, and about you know, self-studying uh, of English, uh, by the way? Oh, what about studying Game of Thrones, English by Game of Thrones? Why yes, I wanted to this? tell you, we have, there are so many fans of Game of Thrones, so maybe you can create a special course. For well, the, you this. know, it has just finished yesterday. I'm a little bit late. No, 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 no. It's it will live forever. Yeah, you that's know? true. It's like a piece of art, and uh, so uh, what. What I think about watching TV and watching and uh, listen to some radio stations, or okay, it's nice. It's 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 nice. It's good to support your level. But first, you have um, you have to be on some certain level to be able really watch this Game of Thrones. Because believe me, this is not the easiest. TV show to watch. They have very, British very unusual accent, words. Yes, a lot vocabulary. of a lot of British accents, and uh, so it's 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 a challenge, really, yeah. even for for very um, well spoken people. No, I don't suggest. So let's start from something easier. It's first and second. It really doesn't bring you English. Unfortunately, so it's it's a good thing to entertain yourself, but it's not really uh, studying because the main thing about um, foreign language and English uh, it's it's your ability to speak, to make some sounds, to uh, and to make some sounds to speak and uh, <laughs> you know at the same time when you don't think too much about how to speak what to speak. So this is the main thing about foreign language. And this is why when you watch a TV show or listen to some radio, it's just an entertainment, nothing more. It really doesn't improve your English, not a bit, unfortunately. It's just uh, maybe, uh, you know, why maybe, and this is the reason why people really love to watch English speaking movies and everything. Because because it, they reach some certain degree in their English studying, um, they need to support. It's, you know? At some level, they just have they want to 
let's say, to get some uh, rewards from their new ability and to, to be able to acquire something which is not available for others. And it brings them this, uh, you know, new feelings. And, you know, it's really interesting to watch, for example, um, some famous movie with the famous actress or actors and um, hear their original voices. It's, it's really kind of cool. Have you because ever watched like... Game of Thrones in Russian? Uh, no, unfortunately. This is a disaster. <laughs> really? This is no. a total disaster. I've tried once and I was laughing whole five minutes I've seen it because all the meanings of, you know, they have very original names, they have designations, they have this, you know, this king's abbreviation. So, like, Budorazdjone? What? Iron board? Okay. 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 No, no, I don't have this experience. Sorry, uh, but so I, I, I want to tell you. Yes, it's it's really fun. It's really interesting to listen to American radio stations because they have. For, it's another culture. It's another world, and it's really interesting. You, you feel like you are an adventurer, and you discover something new. It's amazing if you reach some, some certain level of English, it's really amazing to be able to do this, but don't uh, fool yourself. It doesn't really help you to, um, to improve your English. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's compare. Imagine you... It's like I can compare. Mm -hmm. You, you want to be an um, artist. You want to, uh, you, you know, draw some pictures. And you go to a museum... And you look on the beautiful masterpieces around. Very careful. Huh? Like very close. Very careful. <laughs> very close. Very close. And you, you, you really you enjoy this process. But it doesn't help you to draw uh, anything. That's a dream. But um, um, imagine for these two years, you've been very hardly watching consultants speaking. Yes, absolutely. And I hate them. Already. Or <laughs> because of it. <laughs> or you've been trying to do something with your own speech that actually you've been doing. What would work better? You know, the truth is, uh, uh, we don't watch any consultants, or maybe some small pieces uh, just to Brian Tracy. I love him. I really love him. He's very boring, old school, cool. boring. Now we know it after we've spent some lessons for what you yes. mm -hmm. um, Gary V and everything. But it's not a part of education. It's just part of entertainment. But our education is only when we just duplicate and repeat and play with these phrases forth and back, you know, hours and hours. And, and this is only one practice which really helps. And I want to tell you, it's it's very interesting because people they're chasing, they're chasing uh, some magic. They they are trying to find some, you know, magical recipe to. to <laughs> We've discussed it with to, you a wonderful gadget that you put in your ear, and to your mouth. Yeah, yeah. And when your mouth is opened, it says English, you know. Wow, it sounds cool, really. It it should be invented. <laughs> Yes, one day maybe, but not the, like, you know, following decades at least. Uh, it's, why not? I believe, why not? It can, it can appear, but for now, do you, uh, I think we're now saying very not what we're thinking about spending two years for it. Because, you know what I wanted to ask you? A lot of people think they, uh, they don't believe that they would be able to speak and to use English as their mother language. And I understand this approach because uh, I had the same feeling from the very beginning. But And I have it now. Uh, <laughs> okay. But after, uh, you know, I looked on this uh, hobos on Manhattan. They are, they are everywhere, you know. On every beautiful, nice street, you can see some homeless hobos. They lie on the street if it's warm weather and they ask you for money, some food and everything. But, you know, I noticed one thing. 
They speak English very well, amazingly good. They speak English very good. And every labor, every janitor speaks English amazing. And it doesn't depend on their degree and, um, you know, anything. Culture, color of skin, anything. They speak English. And I told myself, like, okay, if they can, I can do it. Why not? So I'm not less uh, able to do things. So why? And yes, it takes two years. It's true. Uh, and also, it's not very, let's say, it's it's not very entertaining thing from the very beginning, at least. Because, uh, like, first months, it's uh, like a hell. Because you really cannot, you cannot you speak, you like can, blah, 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 blah. yeah, and <laughs> you are just duplicate and you you really feel stupid. Because you duplicate it, uh, you try to construct some phrases. And your vocabulary is too tiny to explain yourself. And your uh, ability to use uh, tenses, you know, language construction is absolutely um, tiny. And uh, you feel awful, believe me. How many hours should should pass so you would feel better? Um, I believe at least 100 hours. In 100 hours, you feel really good. You kill people now. They are like, why? Before I had some hopes for learning English. Now, well, why 100, <laughs> 100 hours? Is it it's big? not a lot? It's not a lot. Just calculate how, how much time we really waste on some TV shows and some stupid things, really. 100 hours, if you have a, a lesson every day, why 100 hours? It's only three, four months. Yeah. It's about four months. Yeah. It's 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 tiny. It's it's like a, it's easy, really. I agree with you. I have the same opinion. <laughs> I don't okay. think that's a lot. Okay. Um, good. So when we have trouble with memorizing, what should we remember that we don't need to memorize? Memorize actually. Yeah, absolutely. Don't try to memorize anything because it really it doesn't help. And this is you know this kind of phenomenon because I was. Uh, I was learning English six years in my uh, high school, in my school, and four years in my military university. And, and of course, for that time, you remember this list of words and everything. And I remember uh, my first book was Pinocchio. My, in, my, in my school, I was like in fourth or sixth, fifth grade. Yeah. And my teacher gave me this task for a summer to read Pinocchio, and I honestly tried to clarify every word I didn't understand, and you, as you understand, I didn't understand anything. So it was like uh, I had this my own dictionary, like this notepad with the words, and I believe it was the same big as Pinocchio itself, uh-huh. something like this, uh-huh. the same amount of words. And I tried to memorize them, and I, I couldn't. Or I memorized them, but in, in a few weeks, I, I, I couldn't really remember it first. But this was not the worst thing. The worst thing, uh, even if I memorized them, I couldn't use them. I didn't have a chance to use them. So what's the reason to memorize them? And about memorization and memorizing things, I want to tell you, if we try to memorize something, it doesn't any, it doesn't help because... We cannot use it in the real, uh, real life. It doesn't the work this way. The problem is what to use then. What do you substitute it with? Because if not memorizing, how you can study a different way? The problem is there is no other technology. You don't need to memorize it. You need to train this. You need to include these new words in your vocabulary and use them immediately. For example, if I have this new word dwarf, dwarf like a verb. So I need to create some sentences. Um, this nice picture dwarfs others. And uh, Mary wins dwarf my losses. And I have been dwarfed by someone and something like this. So you, you just need to, to use this word in different uh, grammar constructions 
And they repeat it again and again. And every time when you use this word dwarf, you have to imagine this idea. You have to keep it in your mind. You really need to create this concept, this idea, not just mechanically repeat dwarf, 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 something like this. I think that's where the trick is. By trying to memorize, you so heavily uh, dwarf your <laughs> your ability to memorize <laughs> your no your ability to what you just said to put the meaning into it, you know. To yeah, absolutely, because you have to put meaning. You know, when we do the drill, when we drill it, we we have to put meaning, you know, ideas, and only in this case, in our mind. These language constructions, they, let's say, connect to ideas. And this way we create the speaking machine. Absolutely. Because if you are, try to memorize, you have some artificial machine, but we cannot use it because it's not connected to your ideas. Because we don't think phrases. We don't free, think by phrases. We don't think by words. We think by some concepts, ideas, images. And after we explain it, and so we need to connect our speaking machine to this, you know, thinking machine. This <laughs> or thinking too itself. Complicated. I understand it, but and this is why we don't need to explain uh, these things to your students. You just need to tell them, okay, guys, you have to repeat it loudly and clearly. To be honest, I want to tell you one thing. If a student doesn't duplicate this mechanism, and if a student is not able to do this, unfortunately, our uh, technology doesn't work. And I have to confess that we have some percentage of students who stop learning with us because, because of this situation. Uh, repeat it again, please. So this idea, or I, I didn't, I didn't get this idea. They Why? can't study using our technology because they oh cannot grasp this idea. Ah, so they don't understand the approach, and this, and they cannot make themselves to follow this approach because they don't understand the main idea of this approach. And, and I want to tell you one thing. Yes. 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 There are some people, I notice it, it's not about English itself, it's about consulting, know, that's for it's sure. about that's training. That's the general mechanism of studying. <laughs> yes, you know, uh, in, from philosophy point of view, we have two different approaches. We have Asian approach and we have Western approach. Uh -huh. Asian approach is pretty simple. Uh, you just, yeah, I tell you what to do, you do it, and in time you understand why. It's, 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 it's very Asian approach. You like stay in some pores for 25 years and, and then uh, Zen after comes. then comes or something comes. But I'm not kidding, really. It works because the truth is, and you as a teacher, you know, it works well. <laughs> so if you have a student who is ready to follow this way, this student will have English much faster, really. Yeah. This way works. And we have absolutely another approach. It's Western approach. So first we need to understand why and how it works. And after we are able to follow this idea. So first you need to explain why he needs to stay in this post for 25 years. And you need to explain all the logic. Everything happens in his mind and how it happens in his mind and what what a change in his life. And after he agrees to stay in this pose and he stays and he gets results. And after he stops devaluating himself for not yes. having a good memory. Yes, for not having a good memory or not having good abilities or not having something else and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, yes, yeah, you're absolutely right. So I just, this, this thing was noticed by philosophers. Like there are two to absolutely different approaches to acquire knowledge in this world. And if you have uh, the first kind of students, you don't have any troubles. You just tell them, okay, jump, they jump, do this, they do this, and they have results very fast. Yes. And if you see uh, this second kind of uh, your students, so you have to explain them how 
their mind works. Why it's it's an evil thing to memorize something? Uh, what does it mean to to speak English? Or what does it mean from my point of view? You need to explain that this kind of machine, like a ride a bicycle, when you do this. That's the point. And uh, um, ex you know what's good about this? Explanations do not take a long time. It yes, just... absolutely. It doesn't take. No, it's uh, it's maybe. Uh, if we count it in total, maybe 10 hours. I mean, if you count every explanation, 15 minutes of each, and if we summarize it, it's 10 hours maximum. So, 10 yeah, absolutely. hours of explanation, 90 hours of drilling. Yes, absolutely. And you have to provide them with this explanation, and uh, they will drill, they will drill, they will absolutely. drill, and they will have the same results, really. Absolutely agree with you. Okay, what about you? What is better for you to understand or just to drill without understanding? You know, it's it's hard to say. Um, it's hard to tell you because um, I I want to explain you know, because you know my way is very very unusual. You know, <laughs> That's, I know it. <laughs> Everyone is special. <laughs> <laughs> so my way is special way and and, uh, and yeah absolutely and uh, because i i was i was really looking for this kind of approach uh -huh. because uh, i consciously came to this point i consciously came to the point that i need to have drills a lot of drills but so my way was from from my mind from my analytical understanding how human's mind works and um, I came to this idea and I started to look to look around into f trying to find where the solution and it was only your service which is had the solution the solution and I love it really so uh, my, my my experience is very special because I you didn't approach me you approached me but it was not like uh, I was at the very beginning of my way, so I tried hard and I tried everything. I tried our usual approach, our usual teachers. I tried Manhattan English as a second language school, online courses, uh, self-studying, and just name it. Okay, what, and, what do you think? Uh, comparing a job with a teacher and uh, comparing this self you know because you told me that you work with dictionaries and you really follow these things you really keep uh, applying the correct technology um if you would know this technology and you apply it alone and you know this technology and you apply it with a teacher what is more effective of course with a teacher it's like five times more efficient of course because if you apply um, yourself it's also possible if you have uh, audio discipline records, organization uh, amazing discipline and for this you just better to live somewhere in the middle of nowhere siberia deep forest and uh and not to be distracted to internet and that's it. yes yes uh, not to be distracted by anything else around no girls no entertainments <laughs> no you know nothing really kids work nothing and, and, and you also, you have uh, good enough materials and a discipline and time. Of course, you will be able to have some level of English. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, in this case, it, it took her much more time. Because with teacher, you, you see, teacher, a trainer helps you and corrects you immediately. So you don't need to repeat 100 times to understand that uh, finally you, you have to correct it because you didn't pronounce it the right way or so you didn't use it right way. And this is why you need to do it somewhere, somewhere, somehow else. So yes, of course, teacher or trainer, because uh, they are really your teachers, they are not teachers. They help to drill and they are like a trainer. They are like a personal um, English instructor, but they're not really teachers because it's not like their usual lesson. It's prohibited um, to explain anything on our lessons. Okay. Yes, it's yes, it's true, and and and, and because explanation doesn't really explanation don't help really. And I have um, on my platform, 
I have everything explained on a platform. And if you need to understand something, you just watch the video. You don't listen to it. It's very important. Yeah, and I, believe me, I understand this very much because sometimes I listen, I watch uh, how my um, my lecturers of my company, how they deliver some ideas. And sometimes it drives me crazy. And, and this is why I, I I record all my lectures and <laughs> I tell my clients, okay, guys, please watch this video because only in this case I can offer and I can promise you that you will understand but it you see, in the again, right way. It contradicts with a so popular um, individual approach. Have you heard of it? Have you heard that if you have a teacher, the teacher is your you know, guru, uh, the one who provides you this way and the way he explains is a miracle and you need to get this life face-to-face -face explanation. What do you think about this? Because in these videos, there is no soul. It's just a video. You know, I want to tell you one thing about uh -huh. this individual approach. Uh -huh. Your teachers, they provide individual approach. For sure. Because if they train me, for example, and I play with some phrase, with some words, uh, they individually adjust this drill for me. Because uh, one person needs to spend like 20 times for this phrase and another one needs five. to spend five times. And, and this is the individual approach. So because your teachers, they really provide absolutely 100% individual approach when it comes to drills. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to explanations, I don't believe uh, in, you know, variety of ways how to explain something. I believe that there is only one correct most efficient way. way, correct way to explain something. Uh, and usually... When people try to explain in different ways, they just make it more nebulous, less clear. And this is why uh, I don't love this idea. Yes, and uh, I, I am I'm staying for this or uh, to have this video explanations from a really high level master. And, um, and you know, it's also very interesting because if you have video material, video explanation, you can stop at one moment. You can repeat it. You can uh, rewind it back. You can you can listen to this video twice or three times if you need. You see, you cannot uh, play these tricks with the real uh, life teacher. It doesn't work. Please stop. And this is why it again everything you just yes repeat. yeah 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 La last word I didn't get it this last one okay okay uh, uh, two last phrases please okay okay I got it let's go for it. You know, it doesn't really work with the live teacher. And this is why I, I really appreciate video materials. Mm -hmm. I prefer, personally, I prefer to have video materials instead of listening to a real person. Because even if he is a genius, I cannot push on the stop. I cannot play the game. I cannot, uh, you know, make something, um, you know, slower or something faster. But I can do it with video materials, and this is why I appreciate it. I believe it's like a new level, and all this uh, explanations like, oh, a live person, it's so cool. When a live person explains everything, you grasp it better. No, it's just justifications. I think that's they just don't fear have... of online learning. Yes, it's kind of fear of a computer screen, because unfortunately... Not all the people, they feel comfortable um, with their oldest modern technologies, unfortunately. But the truth is, in this case, you have to say, I hate computers. And this is why I cannot get this high-level, efficient way of learning English. And this is why I will use this usual, old-school, not very efficient way how to grasp it. Look at this. this is and this is, it, it, this is the truth for them. Yes, it's cruel, but, you know, the truth is always cruel. Yes, unfortunately, ugly truth. Ugly truth, and this is why they call it ugly truth, because it's cruel. Because, you know, also ugly truth, people think, okay, I'm going to move to the United States, <laughs> and I'll listen to people around. And, uh, 
and you know, immediately it helps me to understand. Happen, and I speak English and everything. And hi, uh, hi guys. No, it doesn't help you. That only one thing which really helps when you move to English-speaking country, it's a level of necessity, <laughs> because no one understands your Russian, and so you have some level of necessity to speak somehow. Anyway, you have to make some sounds, and, and this is only one help. Everything else doesn't help because, first, people around you, they don't speak English. It's a very interesting observation, but the truth is when you approach Whole Foods Market or when you approach some grocery store or anything, Macy's, you will find a very interesting thing. There are so many different people from uh, miscellaneous countries, and most of them, they don't speak English well. Another and you know, to, to, to understand them, you need to have pretty decent level of English, above average, because to understand guys from Haiti, or to understand guys from some, I don't know, islands, or for, from, I don't know, some European countries, they speak English, yes, but it's really, it's a challenge to understand them. Agreed. So it really doesn't help you. And also they have very simple language, very, very simple. And often it's not right. They don't use English right way. And this is why it doesn't help you at all. Of course, TV helps because TV movies, TV shows, radio. So well, they don't give it, uh, incorrect materials to the public. Yes, at least they speak more or less right English. way. So it's, they, you can use it like a, a role module. But it doesn't help you because you don't speak, you just listen. And when you listen, you don't improve your English. I you improve your English while you speak only. And that's why I think... Uh, uh, the source of information should not be a live person, like a person, because it doesn't matter is he a native or not native, how well, not speaking of Russian speaking, like me, I don't think of myself as a source of English language. I don't trust myself. <laughs> so I think <laughs> <laughs> the best material would be something that exists in English, like uh, something like a article, like now we're going to discuss with you um, six lead generation tactics in Instagram. It was written by a normal American woman <laughs> that was also corrected, I think, by several editors before it was published. So mm -hmm. at the end, we get a ready material to use for creating machines. And it would be incorrect just to speak and to use my, my language or yes absolutely because usually we speak too simple too flat we use very simple phrases and it doesn't really help you to develop a language and this is why yes you're absolutely right all these phrases they have to be specially prepared for these students for his level for his vocabulary for finally for his uh, area of uh, expertise that's true. Because it, only in this way, uh, here, as a result, he has a very useful vocabulary. And I want to tell you one interesting thing about my English and my vocabulary. Sometimes I, I understand, I don't know how to name, for example, some, um, some very simple things. How to tell um, mops in English. The truth is, I know how yeah, to tell Yeah, now you know, after the press. Pug, pugs, yes, because my daughter, she got one a few days ago. And But I don't know names of all the trees, which I know. I know them in Russian, but I don't know them in English. Berezka, Asinka, Ivushka. Me neither. <laughs> I don't know. And you know, it's very interesting. But... I'm absolutely sure that I have pretty good vocabulary when it comes to business <laughs> management and uh, all this organizational stuff, systematization of business. I know these things and I can really keep my conversation and, and maintain any kind of discussions in this particular area. But uh, when it comes to a grocery store, <laughs> I don't know a lot Give of things. Give me these green leaves. <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Even if I know how to say it in Russian. And, you know, I, for example, I use my uh, lingua uh, dictionary on my iPhone every time, almost every time when I visit whole food markets. Yeah. Okay. Because I, I really don't know a lot of words because we didn't go through all this vocabulary with you because we dealt only with business vocabulary mostly. And the truth is, I just wanted to tell you that the same thing works absolutely opposite way. So if you are in this uh, area and if you know this, you know, um, let's say school uh, level vocabulary, if you have the school level vocabulary or some university level vocabulary, which is much better, uh, it doesn't mean you can use really in business the same thing. No, it doesn't help you because there are so many words in this area. Because a lot of people think that IELTS or TOEFL is more than enough to go and have a business abroad. No, I have a TOEFL and just basically it's, it's, it's very like say uh, it's very it's ba- academic vocabulary. It's for vocabulary. A- for- academic vocabulary level. Yeah. So it's like a general, 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 general thing which doesn't really help you uh, in business. Honest, we have a specification with you. We have admin tech, you see, because first we grasped and covered admin tech, and then we went to business vocabulary, you remember? Because first, we've yes. been hardly working only with your books. And then we yeah, absolutely. have fun with Brian Tracy, Instagram lead generation tactics and stuff. Yes, yes. And one more interesting thing about English. Uh, I know a um, few book writers yeah. uh, because um, some of them were my editors. They helped me to edit my books. Yeah. And, and some of them just my friends. Mm-hmm. Um, and I want to tell you one interesting thing, how they work on their books. It's not the same way how we write Russian books. And, and, and when I, when I uh, find out this difference, I was surprised. You know, uh, English has much more words, much more. Like English, uh, English lesson uh, language has about twenty-five thousand words to use. It's, mm-hmm. it's pretty usual. But when it comes to Russian, it's about seven thousand, maybe th- ten thousand mm-hmm. words. Like English has like three times more words. And when they write articles. For example, you want you want to you want to yeah, read books I or articles. Review article, huh? And when they write articles, they have special tools. And you know you have it in Microsoft Word, and especially you have it on every professional software to write books or articles. And this software helps you to find a good synonymous, a good words to explain yourself. It's true, and this is why. It's almost impossible to read this Harvard Business Review because the truth is, if you, uh, if you, for example, if you met this person who wrote this article, you you could be surprised because he doesn't use these very sophisticated words in the real life. But when he writes an article, he uses the special dictionaries to find these weird words to look more scientific more smart, more attractive. And they love it. It's like a part of English culture. It's true. They really love it. I know. And this is why you need to be very, very careful when you read something. Because sometimes you think, oh my God, I'm so stupid because I don't... I have pretty good English, but I don't know what does it mean. And, you know, also I have this experience with the Americans, well-educated people. And I ask them, okay, do you read Harvard Business Review? How do you understand this and that? You know, usually the answer, I don't understand it at all. Really. Sorry. I don't understand this word and that word and this word and that word. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes, it's true. And they are not stupid. They have very high degree and they have very good experience in business and they don't understand Harvard Business Review. And they, the same way as I use dictionaries, the same way they use dictionaries too. Okay, so it makes us normal people. Thanks, God. <laughs> yes, and, and also, you know, this is why you need to have a teacher because it's really 
hard to understand all the standards because it's hard to understand if it's wrong with you or if everything good with you. You know, you you really need to be able to draw this line. But or are you okay? Have linguists for this. Yep. I don't have okay. materials myself because there was a when I came to some point, I just realized that it goes crazy and too complicated. Yes, it goes too complicated because you can imagine, okay, your area, I'm okay with your area because I apply admin tech. Yes, because you are a business owner and uh, it's okay. More or less, I can grasp these ideas. Maybe in the beginning, it was difficult for me when I was first time watching this org board stuff and so on. But imagine a guy uh, with uh, Keramika or a guy with a Riba Promisel, or a guy with Agra... Bio, biochemistry something. Yes, and can you imagine... DNA sequencing something. Every, like, every month, every two weeks, I do some little review of our individual programs, and I read, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and this is only a linguist who, had, who can deal with it. Because, you know, sometimes our students come and says. Это не подшипник, это что-то там такое. And we are, okay, you know. It. Look at you, look at you. It's not DNA sequencing. This is from biochemistry. Don't you understand it? Yes. And do you remember our lessons when sometimes we were like, uh, I duplicated this sentence and I told you like, you know, I, I, I cannot grasp it. I don't understand it. What's the stupid idea? And because this true. This is true. Sometimes there are, there are stupid ideas and okay, and sometimes this praise doesn't make any sense. But do you know how I handle myself? How do you handle yourself? Uh, it's easy. I just started to listen how people communicate in Russian. Uh-huh. And it's also very interesting. Just try, go to the street and listen to people, how they really communicate. Masha, ha, ты это делала там, ты в курсе? Чего? It's like an American. It's like, just like, uh, mm, you know. Absolutely. And this is why, you know, if a person with the, the school level English goes to the street and listens to American people, he says, like, oh my God, what happens with them? They don't uh, construct these uh, questions like, did you read this book? No, they ask, you read this book, huh? Yes. You know, it's really the same thing. But because he is academically trained, it's okay. It's okay to be academically tra <laughs> trained. And if you're on the stage, you don't need to ask, you, you read, read this book, book huh? <laughs> yes, on the stage, it's much better to ask, did you read this book? It's like more polite, more recognizable more understandable, it's more cultural, it's okay, really. But uh, in real life, no one speaks this way. And this is why people are there in confusion somehow. Well, <laughs> what happens like in Russian, you know, you can't imagine uh, yourself going to the stage and saying, ну, что вы там читали эту книгу? Ну, что вы, ребят? Ну, что вы в натуре там вообще читал? Ты где-то был вообще? Ты потерялся, пацан? This is, yes, absolutely, absolutely, and and this is why uh, Russian people say it's like, okay, you know, I was in this place, this restaurant, and I just cut myself. I I, I didn't understand anything. I understood nothing because no one word. It was like yo bro and all this, especially when it comes to some Haitian guys or from America and so. Spanish-speaking people or Chinese-speaking people, you know, it's a, it's a challenge, really. And But it's okay. You, you really you are able to deal with this if you have this, uh, you know, basic level. I just wanted to tell you, it's one more reason why to be in this English-speaking culture, it really doesn't help without a teacher. And also, no one will explain you. You know it's how, it go, how it goes here. So you don't understand something. Of course. The the, of course. The, 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 says, one minute, sir. Yes. Okay. No one will explain you. You know, my friend, you don't use this article in the proper way. You have to use this article in this way because 
The nature of this article, it came from old English word Latin one, to old Latin and, but no one, no one, <laughs> no one explain you. And this is why uh, you cannot really acquire this knowledge if you listen to people who doesn't speak right way. They don't, don't speak right way. And they don't explain you how they use all this wanna, gonna, uh, and that's it. Yeah. You have to have teacher, for sure. I think it's unfortunately because it makes the process so complicated. You know, you have to find a teacher, he has to create a program for you, it has to be connected with admin tech, then it has to be connected with a business, then there are linguists, and they also make mistakes because they are not admin tech specialists, and then you have to duplicate it, and then you see it's hard. Yeah, yes, it's hard, and this is why when you approached me two years ago, at this at that point, point I was desperate already because I tried everything I could try, and and this is why when you approached me and you wrote me this short brief or about your language yeah. drills, I said yes, let's start immediately. <laughs>